but uh, I am very happy. I have to point out, this is, this is where I'm at, right? I have to point out that I'm happy because I'm at this weird point in life where I tell people I'm happy and people don't believe me. <laughs> it's really no surprise that when Michael tells people that he is indeed happy, that he's not sad at all about the current state of his life, that some people are a bit suspicious and think that perhaps he's got things mixed up in terms of how he should be responding to life, how he should be valuing what's going on. Now, why should that assumption that Michael should be sad be the case on the part of so many people? Notice what he's doing here in telling this joke. He, he actually sets out at the very beginning three things that one would expect to induce some sort of sadness or other negative emotion. He's poor, he's single, and he's not famous. And then he goes through each of those in turn and tells a little bit about them. Everything that he has to say is, is quite funny, but also illustrates for us what's going on in the, you might say, normal cultural perceptions of our times, which are not anything new than other times. And this is part of why Stoic philosophy is so helpful for understanding this. So being poor, does that mean that he has to be unhappy? He talks about people understanding when he might be sad, uh, the bank manager who looks at his accounts and says, no, you're not doing well at all. And then how surprised people are when a millionaire or a billionaire feels upset because that money opens up everything for them. Like he said, the world is your oyster. That means you can pry it open and spend some money and get whatever you want. Likewise, being single, that's seen as a bad thing in our society. The ideal is to have somebody, it doesn't necessarily matter who, but somebody that you can say is your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, somebody who who matters to you and to whom you matter and who you have some sort of relationship with. Uh, lacking that, at least you should be able to choose to be single, not be forced to be single. And then being famous, you know, this is something that I think people have become uh, quite interested in. There's many new ways of being famous. Sometimes we talk about being famous famous, and then there's YouTube famous or Twitter famous, uh, all sorts of other alternative ways of, of making some sort of splash and attaining some level of celebrity. Now, all of these have been issues for human beings going back as, as far as we, we know because it's reflected in the literature and the poetry, the, the drama, all the things that, that you know show us what people care about at a given time. The philosophy, uh, when philosophers talk about you should value this and not this other thing over here so highly, the only reason they have to say that is because so many people are mixed up about these things. So what is the real value of things like wealth or a relationship or fame, celebrity, uh, glory, as they used to call it in the old days? Are these things that when we lack them ought to make us sad? Or should lacking them actually make us happy because we're freed up from them? Or a third possibility, perhaps they're what we call indifference. That is, things that we don't need to have, uh, things that could have a neutral value and which we do need to pay some attention to, but certainly not the level of attention that our prevailing culture tells us we ought to devote to them.